In CS3500, we're going to be programming in a language called C Sharp, which is mainly a Windows-based language, and we're going to be using an IDE called Visual Studio. In order to use the best version of Visual Studio, which is the version for Windows, you need to have a Windows operating system on your machine or a Windows machine. Um, for Mac users, you obviously don't have Windows on your computer. So what I'm going to help you do is set up a Windows partition for your MacBook or your iMac. Um, what that's going to allow you to do is when you start up your computer, you're going to be able to choose whether you want to boot into Windows or boot into Mac OS. It's not going to affect anything that you have on the Mac side of your computer. It's just going to allow you to use your MacBook as if it were a Windows machine. So this is going to be very helpful for this class and potentially future classes as well. So the first thing that we're going to do is get a Windows product key, which is available to you for free through Cade. So you're going to go to cade.utah.edu and click on this MSDNAA link over here and sign in using your Cade username and password, just like you were signing into a Cade machine. The next thing you're going to do is click on operating systems and we're going to pick Windows 10. So there are multiple versions of Windows 10. There's Windows 10 Education and then this Windows 10 Pro. I would recommend using the Windows 10 Pro. It just has a few more, a few extra functionalities that you might find nice. If you are just going to be doing the very, very basics, the Windows 10 Education might be fine for you. But you're going to use the Windows 10 Pro. Go down here and click Add to Cart. Um, when this pops up, it's just saying um, that this isn't normally used on a, on a Mac. Um, just click OK. And then it's going to come up with a box that says, uh, do you want to add continue shopping or check out? And you're going to click check out. I've already purchased this. So this is saying, hey, you can't have more than one of these. Um, after that happens, after you click check out, it's going to be completely free. You can go to your account and orders. And this is my Windows 10 version that I already downloaded. And what you're going to do is look at the product key and um, you're going to write the product key down. I'm not going to click on this because I don't want to show off my product key, but it's going to come up with a product key and then you can write the product key down with the pencil and paper. You won't be able to copy and paste it later, so you'll need to write it down. Um, after you have that, we're going to actually download Windows 10. So we're going to download an ISO file, which is a an image. It's the, the entire operating system. So we're just going to Google Windows 10 ISO. Click on this first link. And they have this fancy little note for us. This is what we're trying to do. We are trying to use Boot Camp to install Windows 10. And it's telling us to install the Windows 10 Anniversary Edition. And then we can later install uh, this update if we would like to. So we're going to go and click the Windows 10 Anniversary Edition. Click Confirm. It's going to ask us which language we would like. I'm going to choose English. And then the last thing is you have to use Windows 64-bit. It's required, I believe it's required um, with Boot Camp. And I'll explain what Boot Camp is in a minute. So um, this is going to download it's 4.1 gigabytes, so it's going to take quite some time, unless you have Google Fiber. But even then, it might take some time. Um, I have already downloaded it. It's So I'll just look in my downloads. I've already downloaded this file right here. So I'm just going to use that file. So once you download your Windows 10 ISO, what we're going to do is open Bootcamp Assistant. 
So to do that little shortcut, I'm just typing command space and then typing boot camp assistant and it allows me to open up any program on your Mac. It's very helpful. So boot camp is what's going to do a lot of the work for us to allow Windows to be installed as a partition on um, our MacBooks. So we're going to click continue. Oh, one thing I wanted to know. This says to back up your disk before partitioning it. You might want to do that. I would hate for you to lose everything. I didn't back up my Mac before I did it and I didn't have a problem, but I also didn't have anything super valuable on there. So if you've got lots of valuable stuff, you might want to back it up. So once you get to this screen, it automatically found my ISO file, my downloads. If it doesn't automatically find yours, you might need to tell it where to go. Um, and this is going to allow you to choose how much space you want your partitions to have. So I'm going to let my Windows partition have 100 gigabytes and then my Mac, the Mac side will have just everything else. Um, I would recommend doing anywhere between 50 and 100 gigabytes for Windows. Um, you just decide based upon how much you're going to use it, how much you want to do on the Windows side. Um, I'm, yeah. So then we're going to click install. Now, one thing I'd like to say before you do this, if you have, let's see if I can make it come up over here. If you find yourself with a little, it almost looks like a, a driver over here that has some, you know, funky letters or something. Um, what that is, is that's the image, it's open. So you'll need to click and drag it to the trash bin. Um, it looks kind of like this, except it's all white. And I can't make it open here to show you. But um, if, that's, if that's the case, you'll need to uh, eject it before you can do this. So we're going to click install. Oops. Okay, hold on. I accidentally... Resize, install. So this is going to start the download process. Um, I don't actually want to do this on this Mac at this time, so I'm going to stop it, but you're going to go through the entire process and then what it's going to do is it's going to um, so I'm, I'm going to quit that, but it's going to sh uh, restart your computer and then when it starts up, it will either boot directly into Windows or what you need to do is as your computer starts up, hold the option key and um, I'll show you what that looks like. Well, I'll, I'll uh, post a picture of what that looks like. Um, you're going to hold the option key and that will come up with a Windows little driver guy and a Mac OS little driver guy and you'll need to boot into your Windows side and then it will ask you to type in your product key for your Windows 10 and so you'll type in your product key after you do a bunch of the Windows 10 setup um, but yeah after that point you'll have Windows 10 you can go online uh, and download Eclipse, I mean not Eclipse, Visual Studio um, through Cade, but uh, we will be going through all of that, that portion of downloading Visual Studio in class. So I think that's everything that I have for you right now. If you have any trouble or if this wasn't very clear, please comment or send me an email, send any of the uh, send an email to help-cs3500 at lists.utah.edu and we can answer your questions. Um, that's all for now. Really quick, I just want to show you how you can um, start up using your Windows operating system or start up using your Mac operating system. So what you're going to do is turn the power on and quickly hold the option key as it boots. 
and I'm hoping you can see this here, um, you can see that I have a, this says Macintosh HD, or this says Windows. Um, you can't see that because it's not visible, but I'm going to click on the Windows and push Enter, and ah, oh, it's golden.